97.3 ESPN. Eagles insider will bail me out, I'm sure, as we wake him up early on a Saturday. Hey, it's cut down day. He's got to be up. Uh, in fact, last night the Eagles already got busy and uh, helped uh, John uh, write one article, right? Uh, they got 25 roster moves on Friday, but that's really step one, right, John? Yeah, still more work to do today, Pete, uh, but uh, that's a lot more than the Eagles typically do on the Friday. They usually wait a little bit longer, so a bit of a shift this year, and we'll see. Uh, today, they still have to make 12 moves uh, to get down to 53, and uh, obviously they're keeping some guys back, hoping to wheel and deal, and I, I find it very hard to believe we're going to get to 53 without some kind of move because that's just how he rose. Uh, why do you think the change and, and, you know, you say this is more than they typically do, but what do you think the impetus was for them to sort of switch it up a little bit? Ah, uh, you never know. I mean, that could be just as simple as some of the names were leaking out and, and they said, well, let's uh, confirm it because they're annoyed by someone so many trying to contact them to confirm it. So <laughs> it could be something as simple as that. It could be something as uh, complex as they want to spend more time on the phones uh, trying to work out something. And so it could be a number of reasons, uh, both exciting and mundane. By the way, to pay off the uh, question I tried to answer off the top of my head, Glenn Carson I think he was a linebacker at Penn State and then an NFL linebacker for the Arizona Cardinals. He went to Southern Regional. I knew Gasicki because that's in my recent memory. He's the tight end who plays for the Dolphins. Clark Harris, the long snapper, right? So he was a long snapper and tight end, went from Southern Regional to Rutgers. And I haven't found the fourth, but I will try to figure that out. i got to be honest. I was multitasking while you were doing the intro, so I didn't hear the question. Multitasking is good. Yeah, the question, somebody texted in and said that they love the show and they listen and uh, that they there was four men that went to the NFL. So I'm sure Brian will text back in on the text message board who the fourth person is that I missed. But uh, let's talk about Eagles then today. And, you know, Vested Veteran was something we talked about yesterday and how those moves are going to be. So you say you'd be surprised if there wasn't some, you know, like, and you're talking trade when you say move, right? Yeah, I mean, the Eagles, uh, obviously, it's pretty clear uh, who they're going to go with at running back. And there's some talk around the league that maybe they can spin off Josh Adams or Wendell Smallwood. Nothing significant for you're talking about maybe a seventh-round pick in that situation. That's where another organization has a need at that particular position. They don't want to deal it, uh, with waivers and potentially not get the player uh, so you send a lower round pick to not have to go through that rigmarole, so to speak, uh, and 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 trades like that. Obviously, the bigger trade would be a Jadavian Clowney, and that is kind of twofold. I, I mean, it's pretty clear that the Dolphins want him. The Dolphins have the most off, or Houston would like to send him to Miami, but Jadavian doesn't want to play there. So he's kind of running that ship because he has to – sign his franchise tender to, to be traded. So he's got some leverage. Uh, he can sit out. He says he's willing to sit out into the season. Uh, that makes a trade less likely uh, than more likely. Uh, but as we've seen with Le'Veon Bell, if players uh, really want to steer something in a certain direction, they do have some leverage to do that. Did uh, Cody Kessler seal his fate by not picking up the blitz? Uh no, I, I don't think he did. I, I think it was more of the Eagles picked up the pace on Josh McCown. They were they were working behind the scenes in that direction uh, before that happened. They were working behind the scenes in that direction before Nate Sudfeld got hurt. So I, I don't think so. It was just more of an indication they weren't comfortable at backup quarterback. They've obviously – in the past, understand how important that position has been for obvious reasons, and they wanted to upgrade it. They were trying to upgrade it. They wanted Josh McCown. They did some unique things to get him here, not only paying him significant money, especially if he has to play, but also 
He's coaching his son's football team down in Charlotte where he lives, and he gets to go back every Friday uh, to continue to coach. <laughs> I've never heard that before. So they're letting him leave on Friday to go coach football, high school football, and then he comes back for the game. So that kind of tells you how much they wanted Josh McCown in this organization as a backup quarterback. So they were always working in that direction. Uh, and I don't think if Cody picked up that blitz and played well, I, I don't think that would have changed. Yeah, it's a pretty unique thing. Ryan and I talked about it yesterday on the Sports Bash about the fact that McCown gets to go back and coach his kid in Charlotte. And then we went back and forth and said, do you think he's flying commercial or is he fr- flying private? Because, you know, I mean, he's, you don't think the Eagles are paying for the plane, do you? That I don't know. That's an interesting question. I'll ask you. Uh, when I see him next, but uh, he's got plenty of money. I would imagine that he can handle it himself or he can fly commercial. I mean, some of us, uh, (laughs) you know, I think, uh, I think all of us who do fly commercial, if we have the ability to not fly commercial, would do it in a heartbeat, uh, would do it in a heartbeat. So we'll, we'll see how it works out for him. But either way, it's clear that, the Eagles bent over backwards to try to get him out of the uh, broadcast booth and out of retirement and out of coaching high school football. They couldn't do all of those because he still wants to coach his son. But right. uh, they they did quite a lot to convince him to come here. Well, I was definitely chuckling. We're spending some time with John McMullen, or 97.3 ESPN Eagles insider. You're definitely going to want to follow him on Twitter today and every day, but especially today at JF McMullen as the cuts will become official at 4 o'clock. And I was chuckling with Ryan yesterday because, you know, they, it used to be U.S. Air, then it was U.S. Airways, and, and their hub was like their headquarters was in Charlotte. So Phil And Philly was a big U.S. Air airport for a long time now it all got sucked up by american but either way you know philly to charlotte i'm sure there's a jillion flights you know if he, if he's going to go that way and i was just excited because i got to make my joke about they used to call it u.s scare but now that's not the airline anymore so <laughs> <laughs> there's so many uh, it's sort of like arena names airports and hubs uh especially when you're my age and you've gone through them all and uh, I used to live in Minneapolis for a long time, and that was a Northwest hub. But now Northwest is no right, more, so right. now you got to get used for used to Delta. So, and it's like arenas you 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 get used to the names, the old names. Uh, obviously, the Spectrum here in Philadelphia, everyone was familiar with that. But now everything has a corporate name, so you got to get used to uh, the corporate names. And how many times has uh, Wells Fargo Center changed. Right. Uh, well, the best the one was time. in the beginning when it was the first F- Union Center. Center. Yeah, because yeah. everybody could say, could say that. <laughs> All right. Uh, and, and, and by the way, real quick, the <laughs> Sixers refused to call it Wells Fargo right. Center. Right, the Center. They don't like yeah. their deal. Yeah, that cracked me up. Or or some of the media coverages, too. Like if you'd listen to a uh, an outlet in Philadelphia, you'd hear, Live from the center, I'm so and so, right? You know, like they just would chop off any corporate reference whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, and and from a journalistic standpoint, you got to get it right. So if that's the name. That's the name. <laughs> yeah, you should have seen me at the start of the show this morning as I was struggling to find out what the new name is for Rutgers. It used to be High Point Solutions. Now it's Shy Stadium. So there you go. Put that in your arsenal of corporate names that you really don't care about, nor would you like to remember. Yeah, and I didn't know that, so you gave me some knowledge. Glad I woke up this morning. Glad I woke up anymore. Uh, me, me too, buddy. Me too. So injured, reserved, we've got a couple categories here. Injured, reserved, waived, injured, released, and waived are the four categories of the moves that they made yesterday. And then Richard Rogers on IR, that means that, you know, that opens up, what, a spot for Josh Perkins probably, right? Yeah, most likely, or uh, it's potentially the Eagles. uh, I would say there's an outside chance that Alex Ellis has played pretty well. Uh, He's a versatile player. He's more uh, of a well-rounded player, a little bit more of a blocker than Josh, who used to be a receiver at the college level. So he's kind of just a flex tight end, and he's dropped the football a little bit too much. So. He's a great athlete, but he hasn't been consistent enough. 
And and the second, the the C category there is they might not keep either and look on waivers to get an upgrade. Oh, right. That right. that Richard Rogers injury is more significant than people realize because the Eagles were very comfortable with him as the third tight end. He's a good player, not a great player, but as as depth uh, behind Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard, that's pretty good. And uh, he's gone for the season and. If you're going to play a lot of 12 personnel, two tight ends at the same time, you need backups. So that's a, that's a bigger hit than people realize. Yeah, and then when I look down the waived list and I see Donnell Pumphrey's name on there, all I can think to myself is, wasted draft pick. Well, it's interesting because Donnell, and he'll always be regarded as, as a wasted draft pick, especially if you look at some of the running backs that season and running backs chosen after him. Uh, the Eagles made a mistake, and that's fair to point out. But if you go back to that year when the Eagles kept him, uh, he, he did not deserve to be on the 53-man roster, but they didn't want to admit the mistake that early. And now he's done better, but he's buried on the depth chart, and, and he is waived because it's far enough away from that draft where they can – not default to the draft choices, as every team in the NFL does. I always talk about with the Eagles. They're not unique in that category. Every team uh, kind of defaults to their uh, draft picks from that season uh, and tries to do everything to keep them so they don't look bad. Uh, Eagles should have cut them. This year they should have looked at them more, but they didn't because they already had in their mind that he wasn't good enough. So I think it's interesting and, and, and it's almost a scientific look into pedigree in the NFL and how people rely on it too much. Uh, and, again, it's not just the Eagles. It's a, it's a league-wide situation. John McMullen's with us, our 97.3 ESPN Insider. Read his work at 973ESPN.com. Follow him on Twitter at JF McMullen. And so 4 o'clock today, final roster cuts. You write they have 12 more cuts to make. And you tweeted out last night that most of the Eagles' remaining cuts are clear. And then everything after it was didn't seem so clear. <laughs> well, clear in what? In, in the past, I said. But you only have, come on, you only have a number of characters. You sound like a Twitter credit. I come know. On. I just you, like busting your stones. <laughs> you only have a certain number uh, of, and you should always, you, you should always, What what's very clear in your mind is never clear in other people's minds. I should know that by now, especially on social media, where uh, there's there's a few dullards. Let's let's call it that way. But yep. uh, uh, I listed everything in the decisions they have to make at each position. So that's pretty clear. But now I got to go back and I got to further clarify because of you, Pete Thompson. Thank you, Thorson Adams versus Edwards. Five running backs versus six linebackers. Smallwood Scott Ward versus Hollins. Perkins versus Ellis. Toth or Toth, uh, Opena, Wiz versus Herbig. You probably think that's going to be Herbig from our conversations, I guess. Ridgeway versus Hester, Cyprian versus Ford, and then Mills to the pup. Adams generating some interest. Maybe a seventh coming back was, uh, and then you ran out of characters. Yeah, yeah. So, and and I needed more. Come on, Twitter. Isn't there Give some? More. Isn't there something like tweet longer or tweet longer? Yeah, you or can. Some, you can, some you can add something? a tweet. You can do a thread, but. Uh, that's that's a and I've done plenty of threads, but that's always murky because people don't read the entire thread. That's so you're true. In the same situation. I would be the one. Do you have a word on seven stages of grief to describe the Philly season and its shock, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, testing, or acceptance? Uh, I'm at acceptance, but it's easier for me. So I, I mean, that's always uh, the Kubler Ross method is. Always up to the individual how quickly you go through the steps. I'm impressed that you know the model. Yes, Kubler-Ross, the modified model. Yes, very good, John.